Okay, so here's the second part of quadrilaterals. Quadrilateral. And we're looking mostly at the shapes kite and rhombus. But, of course, we find triangles and rectangles everywhere we go. So let's see what happens here. Okay, so for kite A, B, C, D, mark which angles and segments are congruent. So let's go to mark them. This is this has like this mirror image quality from top to bottom. So I could say like this one is congruent to this one, and this one is congruent to this one, and then this one is congruent to this one. And we got congruency all over the place. But then we got angles too because of that. So I could say that those two angles are congruent, these two angles are congruent, these two angles right here are congruent, and also these two angles are congruent. So we got bisection, and let's do like a different mark. How about that? There we go. So all of that. Oh, and by the way, all these angles in the middle are 90 degrees. Now that we have all those markings, let's see how we can use them. It says CBE is 45. So up here, that's 45 degrees. And then EAD, EAD right there is 36 degrees. And then, uh, let's see, how is that going to help us? Up here, this is 36 degrees uh, on top as well. And then let's see what we can find. Um, if this is 90 degrees, this is 36 degrees here. And then that's a triangle. Check that out. We got a triangle with 36 and 90. And then we don't know what this other, whoops, cancel, uh, what this other thing would be right here. Well, those three should add up to 180. So 36 plus 90 plus something equals 180. So if I were to add those two together, that'd be 126 plus something equals 180. And then in the end, we could figure out what that one up there would be. I know I'm kind of going past what it actually said, but it's good just to find all the angles and then go back and see which ones it's really asking for. So we'd have, let's see, 74, no, 64. 64 is going to be our question mark. No, nope, not 64, 54. All right, so this up here would be 54, which would mean that one down there is the same. Let's do the same thing we're doing for this triangle over here. 90 plus 45 plus something equals 90. That's kind of, this is actually a very symmetrical triangle because 90 plus 45 plus 45 is 180. So that one there would also be 45. Okay, so let's see what we got. ECD. ECD. Well, that's going to be a mirror image of this one here, so that would be 45 degrees. And then CDA. CDA. Now, I, I've seen students do this a couple of different ways. So, one is we could say, well, it's 54 and 45 put together. So you could say 54 plus 45 because we found all of those and that would be 99. The other option is if I were to redraw this triangle, let's see if we can trace it here, this one down on the bottom, and then let me move that over here. Uh, that's just a triangle itself. It's kind of like two triangles built into one triangle. And over here we have 36, over here we have 45, and you could add those up those three pieces up to 180 and you could solve for that missing piece there. All right, then it says BD equals 10. Ooh, I should probably redraw the, this, this shape. Let's, let's do another redrawing of it so we can see all the pieces. Oh, let's see if we can drag it here. Awesome. Okay. And then it says BD equals 10. So this whole thing all the way across is 10. So each half would be 5 because it was split into two equal pieces there. And then AC equals 12. So the whole thing here is 12. And But this piece, EC, is 5 right there. So if the whole thing was 12, that means this piece here is 7. Because we can do like an addition postulate where the two pieces add up to that. The way that we found 7 was that 12 minus 5 is 7. Okay, so once we know that, and this is a right triangle, it's asking us to find AB, which is this one there. Well, that's a right triangle Pythagorean theorem. We have 5 squared plus 7 squared equals AB squared. And then that's 25 and 49 equals AB squared. And then when you add those together, you would get 74. So 74 
square rooted is AB. And there we go. That's, that's it for that one. All right, so what is the value of x such that PQRS this is an isosceles? Oh, it's isosceles. And P is something, and Q is something else. There. Because this would be isosceles, oh, starting to hear that school bells here. Those should actually be symmetrical, and they should be equal. So angle P should be congruent to angle Q. Now, if it were P and S, like one of the top ones and one of the bottom ones, then that would have been supplementary. We could have said measure of angle P. Whoops. Let's take that one off of there. Measure of angle P plus measure of angle S would add up to 180. And basically, we're looking at one from the top and one from the bottom because it's a trapezoid and these are parallel. All right, so since they're congruent, you would just set them equal to each other. 6x plus 9 equals 2x plus 37. And then as you're putting those equal to each other, what's it asking us to do? What's the value of x? So you would just solve this equation for x. Let's go ahead and skip to the last one here. We have two pieces, 18 and 28, and because this is exactly in the middle, that means that this top piece is going to be the other half of that middle. So if we think, okay, from 28 to 18, that's, a, that's 10 units. So then we got to go 10 more units, and we'd end up at 8. So what's the top piece? It's 8. All right, so that's just a quick overview of this. Of course, things change here and there. Like, did we need to go congruent or supplementary? Uh, how did we do these relationships of angles? Just remember the mirror image symmetry, and that'll get you there. All right, so that's it. Thank you.